Hey garden friends, welcome on back to Flower Patch. Today I'm going to talk about something that's been a game changer for me in my garden and I know that you will find it beneficial for your garden too. Plus it has such ecological benefits that I can't help but share. So today is one of my better days. I've been sick for a week if you've been around here much. Um, I have tried not to whine and complain, but I've gotten a virus that's been kicking my fanny some fierce. But today, I don't have the severe sore throat. I'm out here sipping hot chicken broth because it's cool today. We've been having such warm weather and today it's cloudy and actually chilly. Let me see if it's even, well, it's almost 50 degrees in here. But with my flannel shirt, I'm warm enough. So. What are we going to talk about? I am going to talk about a new to me product. I've been using it for a year and you have often seen me using my organic rev and what I love to use it for. And it's an organic growth stimulant, not a fertilizer, but it does help your plants utilize the nutrients that are already in the soil. So that is the benefit of this. But the company that makes this, has now come out with a fertilizer. It's called Eco Organic Fertilizer and Plant Nutrition. Now what's impressive to me about it is it's made entirely from recycled food waste. Now I brought some notes because I wanted to keep on track with this and I'll share a video with you. I will put a link in the description box below and I really, really recommend that you look at this video. It's only four minutes long, but it really goes through how it's made, um, all the benefits and the testing that different farmers have gotten in their fields. And for me, I like that it's local because um, H2H, Harvest to Harvest, is the company that takes the food waste and processes it. And they're in Sacramento. So that's all good. And uh, one bottle is not very expensive. It's concentrated and you can make um, lots of feed from it. You mix it with water. So let me get my notes and then we'll go over what some of the benefits are. I gotta get a sip. Mm -mm, nothing better than chicken broth. I make it myself. I roast a chicken on my Weber grill and then we eat the chicken off of it. We mix different things, make different things with it. And then I um, stew the what's left over and um, in my instant pot and I make sure I have plenty of water in it so I make my own chicken broth. It's actually bone broth but it's perfect when you have a bad sore throat and can't really eat. Alrighty, first of all I'm going to read this. So organic rev, oh wait a minute, no, utilizes cutting edge harvest to harvest technology, that's the company, like I said, that processes the food waste to create a new premium plant food. So it's easy to use, highly effective organic. It's certified organic for uh, use in organic gardens and or, you know, um, in the ag world, if farmers wanna be organic. And it's a diverse source of amino acids available to growers today, as well as the lowest sodium content liquid orga organic fertilizers available. Now in the video, I was impressed with one farmer saying how they were cut 50% of their water that they were allowed to use and how this fertilizer really benefited them in being able to use it where other types of fertilizers would actually create heat and um, yeah, it created problems when you had a shortage of water. So you make sure you watch that. So it means the plant available nutrition, even when the weather gets cold. Um, that's important because if the soil temperatures are below 70, the plants won't usually take up nutrients uh, of other fertilizers. So using their proprietary manufactured food hydrosilate as the base material, CSS is able to create a premium plant available NPK package. Now, CSS is Cal State something. I didn't write that down, but it's in the video. 
you'll get it. Um, this product is registered for organic food production. So yeah, really great. It's really good. Let's see. Uh, what's on the bottle? Fertilizer and plant nutrition. Nor naturally stimulates the growth of soil organisms in the root zone. That's something you want. Plants respond with enhanced root growth and stress tolerance. Excuse me, I had to take a sip of my broth. Um, increased nutrient uptake and water use efficiency. That's something you'll see in the video. Eco-friendly ingredients sourced entirely from recycled food. Now the amounts, I will get into that here. Um, food waste. Did you know that food waste in the U.S. is responsible for the emission of approximately 37 million cars worth of greenhouse gases annually? Can you imagine? So consider the positive impact of removing the greenhouse gases of 37 million cars every year. And that's what happens when they are using the food waste to make this product rather than putting it in the landfills. So the simple act of converting food waste to fertilizer not only slashes global emissions, but would also dramatically re reduce need for harmful synthetic fertilizers. And that's an important factor as well. The, the manufacturing of the synthetic, the use of it, the, the pollution that the synthetics cause, that's all a tremendous, tremendous impact in and of itself. So food waste is overwhelming landfills. Food is the single largest component taking up space in U.S. landfills. That surprised me. It's making about 22% of municipal solid waste. Food waste in landfills is one of the largest sources of methane emissions in the United States. Methane is a potent greenhouse gas about 28 to 36 times more effective than CO2 at trapping heat in the atmosphere over a 100 year period. As food waste decomposes anaerobically, sorry, my throat keeps clogging up. Okay, as food waste decomposes anaerobically without oxygen in landfills, that's where they bury it, uh, it releases significant amount of methane contributing to climate change. So yeah, that was surprising for me. Now, I'm gonna set those over there. I have been using it, this uh, eco-organic, on my seedlings. And I didn't do a side-by-side -side comparison. Sorry. But because I wanted all my seedlings to grow, I didn't want to stun any of them. But I have used this exclusively for the fertilizer for my seedlings. And what I do is I do weekly, weekly. Some people will say, oh, fertilize them every three weeks or so. but. Um, I was watching a garden show, and this elderly lady was showing her whole garden. It was beautiful. She was 80-something years old. Um, but her plants, her baskets, everything was just growing tremendously, and they asked her what her trick was. And she said she fertilizes with an organic liquid um, weekly, weekly. And her reasoning, and I, I agree with it, plants in the ground don't get fed every few weeks. They're constantly have what the soil microbes are, are making for them, or it's a constant feed. It is not just sporadic. So if you weaken it, meaning I would dilute this by to a quarter strength of what it says on the label. So um, this says dilute 15 to one with water before applying. Um, water can mix eight ounces, shake well, and apply as a soil drench or foil feed. This is eight ounces, so that's a cup per gallon. So that would be a quarter cup per gallon for what I would use it for, for the seedlings. So that's weekly, weekly. So it's very weak. Um, yeah. So anyways, that is all about the Dakota Eco Organic which you can use it with your organic rev. So the two together are magnificent. Now I have more on the organic rev that I wanted to share. And this was an independent testing. Now I just put in my artist garden. You watched me do that list this last week. And um, I said when I was done, I was going to water everything in with the rev so that it gets the boost it needs. And it, it helps mitigate transplant shock. So that's just wonderful. 
And um, yeah, but the independent tests, now this is the company that, they actually sent me these. They sent them to me last year um, and they sent me some more this year because I've been using them. And because I do use them and I share with you, they send me the product. But that isn't why I use them. I use them because they work for me wonderfully. So, okay, here is the note they sent to me. We had Rev analyzed by an outside lab recently. I'm attaching the raw data. The results were so unusual that the lab retested three times on their own dime. For those who think of Rev as just a humic or just a microbial inoculant, this may be enlightening. Rev is truly highly unique. Now we're talking about the original organic Rev that I have been using, not the fertilizer. So, just so you know. So the lab found an astounding 652 different species of microbial in the Rev sample. We added nothing, so none of these are lab grown. This is what we try to convey when we say broad spectrum microbials. Microbials in the soil are very, very important. That is what constitutes healthy soil. So we have an entire ecosystem and they showed strong ability to spread throughout their new native soil home. Meaning when you add the rev, the, the microbes, they quickly acclimate to the soil and make it home. Horizontal gene transfer was mentioned 50 times in our phone consultation. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure they'll enlighten me. The inorganic nitrogen release numbers were the highest the lab has seen. Because RAB REV is fully decomposed, it is able to absorb enormous amounts of carbon, nitrogen, and micronutrients, then slowly release them back to the plants as needed. That's exactly what you want, because if, if the microbes are doing it, then the plant isn't getting too much of one nutrient. Um, like if you, they say, oh, if you give them too much nitrogen, you'll get all, um, this is with synthetic fertilizers or other fertilizers that some people use too much of. And I say that because homeowners, that's the number, or home gardeners, number one mistake they make is they over fertilize and that creates a whole host of problems. So this is how it's showing that this product helps the plant get what it needs when it needs it and not more. Um, so, unlike most other organic matter, Rev does not hold any nitrogen for use for its own de decomposition needs. Now that's the problem you have with some wood mulches and whatever, if they get incorporated into the soil, um, they'll bind up carbon for their own use. Not carbon, but they'll bind up um, nitrogen. Okay, so let me get back to that. Um, it acts like a miraculous time-release nutrient feeder, stopping nutrients from being washed away and keeping plants perfectly fed. Biocontrol. This is topic number three. Defense against pathogens and disease. The microbials in REV prove to be extremely effective at attacking common pathogens. We always talk about REV enhancing immune response and protecting against challenges. This is one way it does it. Now that surprised me. I didn't think of the microbes in it attacking pathogens in the soil. So then it doesn't hurt your plant. Uh, stress adaptation. Another huge factor, especially for plants here in Texas, that's where this, these people are, they're in Texas. The Rev microbial's ability to counter stressors. Of particular interest to me was the ACC-D and the ABA- which I don't know what they are. Both of which play a huge role in plants' ability to withstand drought. Coupled with Rev's hydro Philic nature, it becomes a super input for low water growing. That's also important here in California. Reducing our water usage is, is a, a premium thing to do because we have frequent droughts. We retain moisture around the roots and then unleash microbials designed to help the plant withstand and adapt. That's good to know. Nitrogen, the other huge finding was that REV allows a plant to access, access nitrogen in the soil, naturally unlocking it and actually producing it on its own. 
From an environmental and practical standpoint, this means that adding REV dramatically reduces the amount of nitrogen that may be needed. Not only do we greatly improve the plant's ability to uptake nitrogen, we also allow it to unlock nitrogen in the soil that would have been unavailable. So, unlike other, now this is naturally occurring humic and fulvic acids, the REV, and it's not chemically extracted. There are other products that have that, but they're extracted from coal. And um, so, anyways, that's his last parting shot note to me was I thought you'd find this interesting, which I did. I really did. Now the part about um, the nitrogen and stuff and releasing in the soil. I last year had my clematis that was growing up by my Eden Rose. And um, it the leaves started yellowing really bad, but no other plants around it seemed to be struggling. So I didn't think it could be a nutrient deficit in the soil. So what I did was I treated it for a couple weeks, like, well, I should say a week, let it go, went back for another week with the REV. I treated the clematis and it stopped. The yellowing stopped. Um, the yellow leaves did not turn back to green. So I just removed those. And, uh, but all the new leaves, uh, none of they stopped turning yellow. The leaves that were green and the new leaves didn't yellow. So whatever was the problem, the Rev helped it. Um, there could have been a lot of things that cause yellowing of leaves. It could have been uh, iron deficiency. It could be um, other things. Too much of one nutrient that when you have too much of a, another nutrient, sometimes it can block the uptake of a nutrient that's there in the soil, but the plant can't take it up because of the overabundance of another nutrient. Um, I hope that made sense to you. So, and like I said, since no other plants around it seemed to be struggling at all, I knew the soil nutrient level was fine. Or if there was something that was above what it should have been, the other plants weren't being affected by it. But so that's what, my friends, I wanted to tell you about these because I use them. They have made a big difference in my garden and everyone else that I know of um, that has used it, that I recommended it to, um, they have been suitably impressed. Now, a friend of mine was growing avocado trees and indoors, and they were just struggling something fierce. And so she was talking to me about it. And I says, well, um, this product I use, it can't hurt. So why don't you give it a whirl? Well, it made a huge difference. She was so impressed that she called the company and talked to them about it. And so I was good. To, I was glad to hear that because I like to know that it's not something that's just happening in my head about a product that it really benefited somebody else. And when I recommended it, you know, it did the trick. So. Anyway, so that's why I wanted to tell you about these. And um, like I said, I've been using this one for a year. And I will say that the organic fertilizer, it's called Eco Organic. Um, and I used it in my containers with roses last year. And what a difference. It made a massive difference. I was using another fertilizer already. Um, and I liked it. But I switched to this one and I could tell a difference. In fact, I did a side-by-side -side test, which I didn't record. I'm sorry. And um, the ones that I fed with this, they were supremely better. I need to take a sip, guys. That is so good. Now, I had a question from a viewer on what these were. Now these, in one video I had said I had been at Lowe's and there was a plant with orange flowers that I absolutely fell in love with. And um, I've never grown these before. So this is a perennial and it's called Sun Star. And I will spell the name for you on the screen because I know I'm not pronouncing it correctly. And it's called Ornithogolum Gollum Dubium. Dubium. But they have the most gorgeous, vibrant orange flowers. And it says keep moist first year, two times per week after. Um, eight to 10 inches tall and wide. Um, I paid half price. This is normally $8 and I got them on the bargain rack. 
and I got two, and they're supposed to be perennial in my area. Let me see. I have to pull this off for the uh, keep moist two times. It, it, they're hardy down to 10 to 0 degrees. Um, we get into the teens, we don't get down to 10, usually. One time I did, we did. Um, it's been 10 years back and it killed all my roses because it was in October of all months. Nothing had gone dormant yet. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Sunstar is the name, but just that vibrant, vibrant orange. Um, I don't know how the gophers feel about it. I may put this out in my artist garden because it's got the orange flowers. And I was going to look it up to see um, how long it blooms. Some of them may be spring bloomers and then they go dormant for the rest of the summer or what. But I'll look it up. It has a little bit of moss. Where's my, there's my compost bucket. So that's what this is. So if you were the one that questioned me, <laughs> that's what it is. Like I said, I'll put the name, excuse me, across the screen so that the horticultural name. So yeah, I think that might make, make a beautiful addition to my artist garden. And take a chance, it's worth a chance uh, to see what the gophers think of it or if they're gonna bother it, or I could put it in a gopher cage. I don't know how much root growth it needs. I do have some small uh, gopher cages. I could put one in, put one not in it and see if they bother it. All right, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really wanted to give total um, attention to these because I wanted you to get the full spiel. Again, go and watch the video that I'm linking. Like I said, it's only four minutes long, but you'll be impressed with how these things are, how the um, eco-organic worked for the farmers. All right, next video, I am going to be doing something. I've got tons of zinnias to seed. So um, I have, look at my white swan echinaceas. I need to pot up and more. I also, coming up, I'm gonna have a video on dividing, root dividing echinaceas. Now, some people will say you can't do that. They don't like their roots disturbed. That's probably true, but I've done it. And if you have a favorite one that does not, um, is hybrid, if you um, have one that is a hybrid that doesn't, uh, is sterile, meaning you cannot grow the seeds, um, then this is a great way to get more of that type. So that's coming up in, in one of my coming videos. All right, I will see you next time. You guys stay well. I'm getting well. I am taking care of myself, I promise. And I'm on the upswing. So see you next time.